AFL Ring Girls, and you're watching MMAInterviews.tv. Spencer Lazar, MMAInterviews.tv, here at Combat Fight League, the Warner Center Marriott, alongside the lovely but rowdy Ronda Rousey. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. It's it's a it's a cool it's a cool day to be here actually. It's not cool. It's warm out right now. Well, it's it's warm, but um, exactly a year from from now, I fought my first amateur fight for uh, for CFL. So it's kind of nostalgic to be back here and to be kind of like see everything that's happened within like the year in between. It's cool. Yeah, and obviously just coming off a big win in Strike Force, that so you've come a long way in that short amount of time. What's next for you? I know you have a four-fight deal, so who would you like to fight, maybe? What's, what's on the cards? Um, I know who and I know when. I don't know if her camp is agreed yet, so I'm not allowed to say anything until it's signed and official, and I, I just started working for Strike Force, so I don't want to piss off my new bosses already. <laughs> so just, you know, soon, it'll be interesting. Obviously, people already want to see the big fight against Cyborg, it seems like, and, and some people think you're ready, but does that concern you that you don't get the ring time because you armbar these girls out so fast? It actually does uh, concern me. I want to be able to open up and have like you know a full match and have that experience before you know it's it's one of those very important pivotal matches. So, but I just don't have it in me to ignore things that I see. You know, if I see an opening when I fight, it's not like you know I see options A and B and C. Like oh maybe I should think about it and what I should do. You just react. You know, I can't stop myself and try and drag a fight out. So, um, hopefully soon, but not too soon. We'll have a long war for you. <laughs> A lot of people might doubt you're striking a little bit because you do go in there, obviously, look to get the fight to the ground, and you've had all these first-round armbar submissions. Talk about your stand-up work with Edmund and, and how confident you, you are in that despite people haven't seen it. Well, I think the fact that people haven't seen it shows how good you know Edmund has been and uh, teaching me because he's, they're not trying to make me into a world champion Muay Thai person. They're trying to make me as effective a grappler as possible. We do a lot of distance drills. We do a lot of footwork, and you know people are like saying, "Oh, you just come in and grab, and that's all you do." Well, it's really hard to just come in and grab anybody in MMA. Ask any fighter out there; it's much harder than it looks. You know, and I think the the fact that it has been you know, I've taken very minimum damage so far means that you know we've been doing really well at being able to. Be too close or too far away to hit. Let's talk about that little bit of controversy that, that ensued after the last fight. I know it upset you as she verbally tapped, as you said. Talk us through what happened. Uh, well, I jumped into the armbar and it was I jumped up, so it was popping as she was falling down, and she was putting her arm out to cut herself because she was going to fall on her face, and so her arm was popping out, and she was yelling. I thought she was saying tap tap. I guess she was just yelling, you know, ah, whatever. Uh, but I mean, we we're both made fully aware right before we walk into the cage that you know, at any time during a submission, if you yell or say tap or whatever, they're just going to call the fight, and it's not really a controversy at all. She admitted to doing it, and it's in the rules, and that's what happened. And I think Mazagati made the right call. Okay, and obviously there's a lot of talk about Cyborg. How do you feel like you would match up against her? She obviously is, is pretty good jujitsu, good on the ground too, but do you feel like you'd be able to have your way with her getting that fight to the ground? Have my way with her, <laughs> you say it like that. Um, I thought from the day I started MMA that I could already be the best in the world from that day. So um, I feel like in all this time she hasn't had a fight and she's just been training and she's getting you know older and more beat up and I'm fighting every two months and I'm getting sharper and better every single time. So I feel like uh, she has to fight me on my time. I don't have to fight on hers. So when we feel like it's going to be the best time to come in financially and show time wise, we can think we make it look really good. Be a like a fight that people will talk about, you know, make women's MMA a huge deal, then we're going to come in and uh, we're going to go for it. People make a lot, talk a lot about how she trains with men. She trains with men. I, I, people I talk to about that, you do as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't really train with any girls at all. I mean, sometimes I, um, you know, I'll go like wild card and I'm, I'll uh, do some sparring there with the girls. And but it's really hard to find girl training partners in general. I think the majority of women in MMA just train with men. Especially at your level of, of grappling and skill. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to find people that push you. I mean, my favorite training partners are actually like younger, lighter guys that are really fast and really technical because, I mean, yeah, getting gooned around and beat up makes you tough, but I want to get made better, and I really like, you know, young, light guys to, uh, to spar with. Okay, anything else you want to say, Rhonda? No. MMA interviews at TV is fabulous. That's it. <laughs> so are you. Thank you so much for the time. Ronda Rousey here. I'm Spencer Lazar. MMA interviews TV here at Combat Fight League, the Warner Center Marriott. Godspeed and party on.